To assume that somebody is poor based off tattoos is crazy considering that this tattoo alone costs $450. I'm about to go get my nails fixed, shut up. Also, I don't get EBT. We don't even have EBT because I live in Canada. Okay guys, you already know, a bit is thick. So we gotta eat. Let's see what we got today. If anybody has something to say, like don't come at me thick, like just say it to my face. All round, you finna get knocked out the first. Like I'm just saying. I'm not gonna call you no names, but it looks like the back of your neck is red. Hmm. It's God's true beat maker. And I don't know. I will put the light in the sky for the G's that done turn memory from go. Blessings we send to the ghetto youth, them we are take the tick. Let me tell you the funniest thing happened to me today. A baby mama win story. Everyone gather around. So for those of you that don't know, I've been separated for like three and a half years. My kids live with me and they do the every other weekend bitch that's 48 days a year out of 365 it might as well be fucking nothing if you ask me anyways so this weekend happens to be their dad's weekend their dad and i live far apart and he's literally working in town today so last night he slept at the house now my mom is also visiting in town and needed a ride this morning to the train my baby daddy needed a ride to his work truck because he can't park it anywhere near my house. The plan was I was gonna pick him up at 7 a.m., drop him to his work truck, and then bring my mom to the train. But by 6.30 in the morning, me and my mom were up and ready and basically waiting to go. So I went into where my baby daddy was sleeping and I woke him up and I said, hey, it's 6.30, I'm gonna go and drop my mom and I'll be back before 8.30 because he starts work at 9.30. He wakes up out of sleep, he says yes. I explained to him, I'm taking my son with me. I'm leaving my daughter with him. Do you understand? He says yes. Get in the car with my mom driving along. 7, 12 a.m., this man texts me and says, are you going to be here soon? So I call him. I'm like, uh, no, I'm going to be there at like 8. Why? Immediately, he's pissed. Apparently, he needs to leave the house much earlier. So right away, meltdown. Basically, he starts being rude to me. So I hang up the phone because I'm like, yo, I'm trying to work this out. I'll drive. I'll do what I got to do. But you're not about to disrespect me. So I hang up the phone. A minute goes by. I call him back because I'm like, you know what? He has work. It's not worth arguing about. Let me tell you, I call the man back and the man is being rude. Okay. I'm talking. I got to go to fucking work. La, 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 la. And then the man goes, I'm leaving. I'm like, you're leaving what, the house? He's like, yeah. I'm like, are you taking the baby? He's like, yeah, bring her to work with me. I'm like, so you're going to bring the kid to work with you all day instead of just waiting for me to come back? What? Long story short, he hung up on me eight times. Eight times. And then lied and said he was just about to get in the Uber. La, 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 okay? The moral of the story is this man is going ballistic. And the reason why this is so funny is... Yes, it's inconvenient that you're late for work. But do you know he has a four-year-old and in four years, this is the first time he's ever been late to work because of his kid? This is the first time he ever had to scramble and figure it out on his own with his kid? It was heaven. It was honestly the best morning ever. I took the cussing. It was fun. See, man, y'all bros, y'all just be knocking down any snow bunny, especially these ratchet ones that I keep talking about. The face tats, she's, I haven't really seen the body. I've watched other videos. She's Canadian, guys. Toronto, as they say, not Toronto, Toronto. And she's got big man tings. It's a thing, fam. It's a thing, fam. However y'all be talking, shout out to my uh, Canadians and all that shit. But baby, now let me get back to the bros. Y'all really be skeeting in women that look like this just because she's a bunny. This is an embarrassment. So are you guys still married? Because you say you've been separated. Is that a term y'all use in Canada? Because when you're separated, that means that you're married. But hey, do your thing. So obviously he's a bro. She talks this way. Got on her little velour suit, whatever it is. And baby daddy spends the night. Do neither of y'all, four years later, 
three and a half, whatever it was that she says. Do neither of y'all have a significant other? None of y'all are dating? Every other weekend, he's doing this thing or whatever. He's staying at your crib, your mom's there. You guys are cursing each other out. Are there any cheek clapping sessions going on in between all this stuff? Is the next question. It's just strange. So you're celebrating because he's late for work? You should have took the girl with you too. I don't know, but I guess I understand what she says. She thought that he said that everything would be fine in terms of that. I don't know. All that cursing, yelling, all that stuff like that. Somebody still got feelings. And for the man to be comfortable enough, if I'm staying at your place, cheeks are getting clapped that night. And I think you know that. So neither, that's neither here or there, man. Anyway, sleep with whoever you want, man. But hey, this is just too ratchet, too ghetto, whatever. Jira, why are you always making videos about the bros wanting white girls? I, I've had dudes DM me, send me emails, getting all upset and all kind of crazy stuff. Hey man, if that's what you like, that's what you like. This is just unsatisfactory. White guys don't even want chicks like that look like this. I keep saying this, man. But anyway, let's get on to the next clip. Let's go. Mama, it's not a phase. Your daughter's a ghetto ass white bitch. Gucci flip flops. Okay, so I've been seeing this trend go around a lot. And what is killing me about this trend is like, when you ask people to find ghetto, they name black stereotypes. And it's like a person cannot be ghetto, a place can, but there are actions associated with certain places that are deemed as ghetto. It's like people don't consider trailer parks ghetto. They consider like black hoods, Hispanic hoods, POC hoods as ghetto. And that's what's getting me. It's like you're rubbing around the issue without actually touching it. And these actions that people do in these ghettos is typically because of poverty. And if someone isn't born in poverty yet they emulate these behaviors, it's kind of like, what are you trying to get at? Because there's nothing wrong with doing things that are deemed as ghetto, but I wonder why people want to emulate that life so much when they're not born in ghettos, live in ghettos, or anything of the sort. Maybe that's why mama thinks it's a face. I wasn't fucking with the, the twist. I wasn't fucking with the nature of what she was. Culture appropriation. That's what I call it. If anybody has something to say, like, don't come at me fake, like, just say it to my face. So are you, like, that type of bitch that's like, oh, it's a white no, bitch. Um, I'm a black belt, and, you know, bet nobody try me because I'm going to whip someone's ass. Like, it's basically a warning, you know? That's all. A warning to what? <laughs> that I will fuck somebody up if they fuck with me. Mm. Mm. Mm, what? So now, bitch, I'm not even talking to you. I said, mm. Tuck, we could go 12 rounds. You finna get knocked out the first. Now, y'all know I speak about these snow bunnies and these white girls with hood degrees and things like that. Ratchet, hood, we like to use these terms synonymous. Ghetto, synonymous with all these different things. But it's funny how she said it's more of a place than a mentality, a personality trait. But nowadays, that's what we're using it. And unfortunately, a lot of the white women that guys flock to which is crazy if you're gonna get a white girl get you a wholesome asparagus and salmon asparagus and parsnips whatever you want to call it eating white girl instead of the neck rolling the dookie braids the box braids all this bullshit and this is what white girls tend to adopt the worst behaviors of black women which doesn't speak for all black women because they think that's how all black women are ghetto originated with the jewish in venice italy and in germany during the holocaust which was the lower socioeconomic areas where they were living at during this time which were called ghettos so it is a place trailer parks you can call the trailer we call the trailer parks the ghettos too you know it is what it is but I think it is distasteful seeing, it's just weird seeing white women behave like this. It's crazy, but I don't know. You love who you love, fellas. If that's what you like, if you like all that shit, <laughs> do your thing, man. It's, it's, it's blackface at the end of the day. But let's get on to the next video. Let's go. If you were starting to talk to a guy, you were angling for a serious committed relationship with him and he said, I'm willing to be monogamous with you, but you cannot party anymore. Do you pick the guy or do you pick the party? You, like honestly like he should just like let me do my own thing but also like know like i'm not going to hook up with other people yeah. like there's that level of trust you said in your last relationship you were cheated on correct yes do you know the context of how you were cheated on did it was yes. did he cheat on you at a party <laughs> yes he, a, he met the girl at the party yeah would you think alcohol was involved yes in his infidelity yeah okay nice so is it Okay, so is it fair to say that situations where there's alcohol and partying, that the likelihood of infidelity is increased? Honestly, yes. Okay. But, but I can handle it. I'm not that type of girl. 
I'll never do that. I'll never do that. It doesn't happen like that. Girls night out is just girls night out. We get dolled up, we do this, we take shots. I can handle it, but he may not be able to do the same thing. I'm a woman, I can handle it. I don't act like that. Ladies, y'all need to cut that out. I did a story time on date night and I'll link it here for you guys to watch. It happens every time. A girl's going out, she's some, is a very small portion of women that wanna let off some steam or whatever. Especially these women, a lot of you guys, your girlfriends like to stay out and even your wives like to continuously be up in another man's face for some reason. Constantly going out and I had people argue with me, married couples should be able to go da, 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 da. What are you doing, handcuffing each other the whole time? Not saying it can't happen. If you wanna go listen to some music and vibe, but if you're going out by yourself, the sharks are gonna, be circling you got your girlfriends who may be single as well and even if they aren't single if they're married women love attention currency it's their currency guys attention is currency for women it's fiat but at the end of the day that's what they need so ladies try to say this stuff i'm not like that i'm no you are like that women cheat just as much as men it's equal so y'all just need to cut it out man Anyway, let me know what you guys think about these videos. Comment below. Like, share, comment, and subscribe. Hit me up on Link Tree to book a one-on-one -on -one with yours truly. Purchase all my books, merch, t-shirts. Helps to support the channel. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. With that being said, much blessings and abundance. Stick around for the next video that's going to pop up on the screen below. That's where I'm going to see you guys at. This is your favorite everything. This is wisdom. I'm out of here. Peace. Uh, yeah. 50 cents. 50 cents. Part two. Bring it back. Uh, yeah. Can't forget Tony. Fifty. UK.